Funding for the production of Louisiana, the state we're in, is provided in part by the Ziegler Foundation of Jennings and Gulf States Utilities, helping Louisiana bridge the gap to our energy future. For Edwin Washington Edwards, it was Judgment Day. Would the popular three-term Louisiana governor be buried by a hard-nosed, tough-talking U.S. attorney, or would he somehow miraculously be resurrected from the political dead? His reputation, his life, his place in history were on the line. This week, the so-called trial of the century ended. It was a mistrial, a hung jury. Certainly not the vindication Edwards had hoped for, but a lot better than being hung. The question now, can Governor Edwards walk away from the gallows and the noose with his head up, or will he walk away with his hands still tied behind his back? Tonight, a special report. Uh, there, wa there wasn't really much dispute about the facts in this case. If you think about it, there wasn't much dispute about what happened. The question is, uh, are the citizens of this state ready to, uh, to change that type of thing? And apparently they aren't. After all of this, I simply want to say how sweet it is. Good evening, I'm Ken Johnson. From a somber, stone-faced John Volts to an exuberant, even exultant Edwin Edwards. The two men, the hunter and the hunted. Well, their reactions this week mirrored the outcome of the much ballyhooed trial of the century here in Louisiana. The wily Edwards, stalked by controversy throughout his career, had evaded the tireless hunter once again. On Wednesday, the chase came to an abrupt end when a federal court judge declared a mistrial after jurors said they were hopelessly deadlocked. Edwards, charged with racketeering and fraud, said he was vindicated by the decision, and he vowed to run for governor again in 1987. Now, so you will not engage in any assumptions or presumptions that something other is going to happen. Let me say to you that two years ago, I was elected by 63% of the people in this state, over a million votes, to be governor of Louisiana. I've been governor all that time, and I'm going to be governor for the rest of this term. Now, in political circles, reaction to the mistrial was pretty much split along party lines. Republican Congressman Bob Livingston blasted Edwards, saying if he would use all of his talents not to pad his pockets, we'd all be better off. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Governor Bobby Freeman, a Democrat, and the man next in line to be governor should Edwards be retried and convicted, had this to say. Since the overwhelming number of jurors were for acquittal, I think this gives him the momentum to move the state forward. The scars of this trial will be behind him quickly. As for the possibility of a retrial, U.S. Attorney John Volz doesn't plan on making a decision until after the first of the year. But as of now, he says he's leaning toward trying Edwards again. Volts confirmed that his office has been flooded with phone calls from people saying how outraged they are by the outcome of this thing. Legislative reaction was also quick in coming this week. Both House Speaker John Alario and Senate President Sammy Nunez voiced assurances that Edwards will be able to quickly reestablish his damaged credibility and rebound as the state's top politico. But other lawmakers aren't so certain. Well, I had hoped that the, the trial would end with some definitive decision. Uh, whether or not he was innocent or guilty is not for me to say, but certainly I'd hope the jury would reach some con definitive conclusion that would put an end to all of the legal troubles. I think that the longer the state's reputation and the governor's reputation is held up for national examination with the prospect of litigation uh, hanging in our judicial system, I don't think it does us any good. So whatever John Volts and the federal government decides to do with the matter, I hope they'll go ahead and make a final conclusion and get it behind us. Governor Edwards, of course, not only has to reestablish his credibility with legislators, but with Louisiana voters as well. Several statewide polls suggest that only one out of every three people would vote for Edwards again as governor. Has the mistrial changed anyone's opinion? We tried to find out. Would you vote for Edwards? No, I sure wouldn't. I don't, hadn't decided that yet. 
No. Yeah, I'll vote for him. Absolutely not. No. <laughs> Why not? No, really? Because I think he's, I personally myself, I think he's guilty. And, I, you know, you know he, if, he, if, if he did it, he's violating the law just like anybody else. You wouldn't want a criminal oper operating uh, in the government. But I, I'm glad he got away. I voted for Edwards, and I'll vote for him again. Well, of course, this week's decision by Judge Marcel Liverday climaxed a tense 14-week trial that featured an explosive face-to-face -face confrontation between Edwards and Volts. It also was a trial that tediously led jurors and courthouse observers through the bureaucratic bog that often mires the process of licensing hospitals and nursing homes here in Louisiana. Because of the rules and the regulations and all of the red tape involved, prosecutors contended that Edwards and his co-defendants were able to use their political influence and business savvy to manipulate the system and walk away with $10 million. The government tried to prove there was a conspiracy, but as Laura Myers tells us, most of the jurors didn't buy that argument. Laura? Ken, apparently this jury didn't buy much of the prosecution's theory about the conspiracy, the enterprise, or the alleged bribery of a state employee. The governor and his seven co-defendants, later four co-defendants, were charged with illegally getting state permits to build hospitals and nursing homes. They made $10 million from selling them to national corporations. But proving a pattern of racketeering hinged on proving the bribery of state health employee John Landry. He got a promotion motion of $42 a week and the potential for career advancement. Collectively, the jury didn't think that was much of a bribe. For the first time in more than 14 weeks, Governor Edwin Washington Edwards stood behind the Louisiana State Seal, turning a news conference into a cheering rally of support after his racketeering trial was declared a mistrial. I have just won the 16th and most important election of my life and by the greatest majority ever, and I'm very proud of it. The mistrial declared after a hung jury spells freedom for the remaining five defendants. Those five defendants have been bound to the federal courthouse during the last three months. I think it was a one-man vendetta, John Volts, trying to down the Edwards family, period. Why? Just the way it came out, I mean, I, I, just, I just don't feel like that uh, uh, the Republican Party is just that stupid. I, I don't think the, re the whole Republican Party is going to allow anything like that to happen with its blessings. I just think Mr. Volts persuaded them that he had something which he knew he didn't have. And I think that as time went on, I think Mr. Volts felt like that, that his case would be proven. But it never was because it never existed. I've heard people before say that uh, an indictment of this sort and, um, and a trial is a devastating thing in a person's life, and it really is. Uh, uh, I heard the governor saying that, um, that it brought him closer to his family, and I can say the same thing. It brought uh, my family closer together also. I am not in the least bit bitter about having gone through this process. It has given me the rare opportunity to meet and know uh, a lot of individuals, Governor Edwards being chief among them. Uh, I didn't know him well before this trial began. I know him well now. I find him to be one of the most incredibly honest, forthright, and candid individuals I have ever met. And I'm proud to say that I served as a, a co-defendant with him. Well, the most difficult thing was all the time and uh, expense and, and everything it took away from, from, your, from, from my life. Uh, other than that, uh, uh, it's been uh, uh, trying because it, it, uh, it just uh, consumed all of my time and efforts. And I have all these businesses to operate, and I'd much rather be operating my businesses rather than be down here uh, trying to defend myself in a trial which I shouldn't even been in to start off with. For Chief Defense Attorney James Neal, the mistrial is a substantial victory for the governor. And for U.S. Attorney John Volts, that mistrial was much less than a sweet victory for the prosecution. 11 to 1 verdict of acquittal for a, for, a, for a politician and a lawyer who's been in public life as long as Governor Edwards has, in my judgment, is on the contrary. It's, it's quite a vindication. We presented our case for 13 weeks, and uh, those... If there are those who didn't think we proved it, I don't think it's that cut and dry myself. I don't think the verdict means that we didn't prove the case. I think the verdict means that 
they didn't want to convict these people. I don't think he ever had a case. I think the prosecutors got the most out of nothing than any prosecutors I've ever seen. They are that they, they, meant they are that good. They are very good prosecutors. They wrung everything out of this case uh, and wrung in even something that wasn't in the case, i.e. the gambling. We uh, spent uh, more than 13 weeks trying to uh, show this jury and the citizens of this state what was going on, and apparently uh, it fell on deaf ears. U.S. Attorney Volz first announced this week he would definitely retry this case as a result of a hung jury. I think anybody would have to agree that uh, the case has substance, and that's an understatement. But later he hedged on the issue. Because of the breakdown in the, uh, the jury's vote does not necessarily mean that it would be the same thing next time. But obviously all those things have to be taken into consideration uh, before we make a final decision on what to do. But again. The, the, the primary thing is that the defense has asked me, and Mr. Neal, I think, will verify that, uh, not to comment on, on retrial until uh, we've had a chance to discuss things. Defense attorneys are now predicting this case likely will not be retried, but prosecuting attorneys believe they proved the case evidence. They feel perhaps a Louisiana jury isn't ready to convict the most popular governor in the state's history. The bottom line question that had to be answered, namely, was the money or any of the interest that Edwards held in these projects a bribe for future action? That was simple. The part that went around it, namely how you determined his intent through the concealment activities that he and the others engaged in, that got complicated. No, I just think that if, as I looked at him, I thought that certain classes of people that are representative in, represented in the state were not on that jury. Uh, but that's a gut reaction. I mean, I didn't take a out a uh, chart and look and see what percentages should be there. I just, as a gut reaction, didn't see a cross-section of the state on that jury. That jury was sequestered in a luxury hotel for a week and a half. Seven of the jurors are from New Orleans, five from smaller South Louisiana towns. A panel of six men and six women, seven whites and five blacks, became the jury of the so-called trial of the century. But it was this juror, 31-year-old Clifford West, who caused a furor among defense attorneys when he gave this sign, thumbs down, to television cameras early during deliberations. Defense attorneys unsuccessfully tried to have him removed from the jury, citing erratic behavior as their reason. The thing that concerned us about the fact that he gave the gesture four times is that it was uh, not at all an impromptu action by him. It was clearly uh, uh, deliberate. He was intending to communicate something. As I said in court, I don't think anybody can uh, say with absolute confidence what he was communicating, but uh, it was not a spontaneous gesture. To actually think that based on the fact that a man just does this, which is totally ambiguous, you don't know what he's referring to, that he should be removed from deliberations in a trial after 13 weeks is unprecedented. West, previously an unemployed electrician when the trial began, reportedly now has a new job. He says he voted guilty and motioned thumbs down because deliberations were at a standstill, and he wanted newsmen to have a different picture. And this juror, Marrero housewife Ida Warino, said she voted to convict the governor on most charges against him. The jury voted this way for Governor Edwards, 10 to 2 favoring acquittal on racketeering and mail and wire fraud, and 11 to 1 on East Baton Rouge Community Hospital related charges. Marion Edwards, 11 to 1 acquittal regarding the Bayou River Medical Center charges, and 12 innocent votes relating to other charges. Gus Majalis, 11 to 1, favoring acquittal of four charges. James Wiley and Ronald Falgut, 9 to 3, favoring acquittal of 50 charges. The majority of jurors say they don't think the prosecution proved its case. They think the defendants acted as legitimate businessmen. I thought he was innocent, and I saw nothing to prove me wrong. I didn't find anything that showed he was guilty. The hospitals that he was in, he was in when he was a private citizen, a businessman working. And then when he got to be governor, he got out of the hospitals. And it was the records there showing this. The majority of the vote who had voted not guilty tried to show the ones who felt 
that the defendants was guilty, we were trying to show them the reason why they were not guilty. Then they was trying to show us the reason they were guilty. Well, I think it's been a lengthy trial and um, certainly has been, um, it's, it's a relief now to get done with it. I kind of wish that we could have come up with a unanimous verdict, but everyone has their own opinion as to what they heard in the trial. The jury essentially told Judge Marcel Livides it could not collectively recall all of the facts. In notes to the judge, the jury requested grand jury testimony of Governor Edwards and defendant Ronald Falgut. The jury later requested additional grand jury testimony of key witnesses. So after 13 weeks of testimony and six full days of deliberation, the jury remained hopelessly deadlocked. One of those notes sent to the judge states, after days of deliberating, we are now at a point of deadlock with no foreseeable progress. And a later one said, we, the jury, have collectively decided that we have come to an impasse. We have given our 100 percent effort, but the realization is no progress is being made. And when the jury told Judge Livides it wanted tapes of Governor Edwards along with the grand jury testimony, the judge told the jury the request was too broad. Shortly afterward, he declared a mistrial. But the jury was able to make one collective decision, one that scored an early victory for Governor's brother, Marion. The 12 agreed to acquit him of 41 counts of mail and wire fraud, but remained deadlock on the other charges. As charged in the indictment, all eight defendants were charged with manipulating the state's health plan. Prosecutors said the defendants formed an enterprise and shell corporations whose only assets were valuable state 1122 certificates. Those certificates of need enable health care developers to get reimbursed for hundreds of thousands of federal dollars. The eight defendants made a total of $10 million from the venture. But the judge acquitted three of those defendants last week. During this lengthy trial, many ironies surfaced during testimony. On the stand, Governor Edwards pointed out he once made three phone calls to help Prosecutor Volz get appointed to a federal judgeship now held by presiding trial judge Livides. The prosecution's gambling testimony that Edwards paid off debts with more than half a million dollars stuffed in suitcases at first appeared to be damaging, but the defense disputed it, saying Edwards won more money than he lost. That Clifford West, a black union member, voted against the governor surprised many observers. But besides those political ironies, the trial had its humorous moments on the courthouse steps and throughout the city that care for God. Former defendant Charles Isbell played the piano to pay for his hotel accommodations. The governor roasted prosecutor Volts before television cameras in a local bar. And once again, Louisiana politics became one focus of national attention. I want my state healthy and I'm your governor. Now, only hours after his 14-week trial ended in a hung jury, Governor Edwards moved quickly to reassert his authority over state government. At a news conference in New Orleans, Edwards announced that he will call a special session of the legislature beginning January 19th to consider a bold new plan to revitalize Louisiana's slumping economy. Que le bon Dieu m'aide. Que le bon Dieu m'aide. Since taking office to serve an unprecedented third term, Governor Edwards has been hounded not only by federal prosecutors, but also by double-digit unemployment. In March 1984, when Edwards was sworn in, Louisiana's jobless rate stood at 10.4 percent. Today, it's 10.9 percent, the second highest in the nation. 219,000 people statewide are out of work. Governor Edwards says his plan, which he will unveil at a news conference on January 6th, could mean thousands of new jobs. At the press conference on the 6th, I'm going to lay before the members of the legislature and the people of this state a plan that I have which will do three things. It will revitalize this great city from in which we are here assembled today. It will revitalize the economic base of the state of Louisiana. And it's going to hold out some hope for the thousands of people who do not have jobs and have been waiting patiently for jobs.
State officials blame Louisiana's worsening economic problems on the slump in the oil and gas industry. The state is facing a $100 million budget deficit this fiscal year, and the shortfall could hit $200 million next year. Not surprisingly, revenues from severance taxes and royalties on oil and gas have declined dramatically in recent years. Today, we've got about 270 rigs in operation in Louisiana. Four years ago, we had over 500 rigs in operation. We've lost between 20 to 25,000 jobs in the, seg in the production segment. I guess we've lost about 10 mostly small refineries that have shut down. Uh, the industry right now is certainly in the severest recession I've seen in the 30-odd years I've been working in and around this field. And uh, some of the people who have been around longer than I have uh, say it probably the worst since the 1920s and 30s depression. How has this affected Louisiana as a whole? Well, Ed Stimel, president of the Louisiana Association of Business and Industry, says the demise of the oil and gas industry has sent shockwaves through the state's economy. It's in bad shape. It's, it really is. We have uh, over 100,000 fewer people working in Louisiana today than we had uh, four years ago with increased workforce. Uh, we have 125,000 at a minimum uh, net of people moving out of the state on a daily basis to get jobs in Texas, Arkansas, Mississippi, and other states, in addition to the 225,000 people unemployed. So we have around 350,000 shortage of jobs in the state of Louisiana. So it's, it's pretty bad right now. And uh, it is continuing to get worse. Most legislators say they have no idea what Governor Edwards is planning to do to stimulate the economy. Some have speculated that Edwards will propose a state lottery or a plan to spend the $800 million expected from a settlement with the federal government over disputed offshore oil and gas royalties. Others believe the plan may include legalized gambling in New Orleans. As for the governor, he's playing his cards close to his vest. We cannot address the great issues of the day in Louisiana if we do not come forward with a program that will be controversial and some will oppose. But I speak to you as one who knows the hearts and the minds and the thinkings of the people of the state and say to you that I am prepared to advance it. I think it will be embraced by a vast majority of the people of the state and I am prepared to stake my next election on the validity of the program. While the governor appeared to have some of his swagger back in his step this week, his legal troubles may not be over yet. In addition to the possibility of a second trial on fraud and racketeering charges, he also is a central figure in another federal probe involving Texaco. The governor could also wind up having his tax returns audited as the result of court testimony pertaining to his extensive gambling winnings and losses. Governor Edwards, of course, has maintained his popularity down through the years, despite repeated brushes with the law. But can he keep his grip on the governor's mansion and the legislature without turning around a troubled economy that seems to be spinning its wheels in reverse? How does a politician with a tarnished reputation attract new businesses and industries? Can he do it? What happens to Louisiana if he doesn't? Tonight, we'll try and answer those questions and a lot more. Joining us in our studio is Wayne Parent, a political science professor at LSU who specializes in state government. Dr. Parent, first of all, how will the outcome of this trial affect state government in your opinion? Well, it'll give Governor Edwards one big chance right after the trial at the special session to bring Louisiana out of its dire, dire econ economic straits right now. We're in real political trouble, real economic trouble. People know that. And um, Governor Edwards can. Uh, can give it a good strong shot. He's got a couple years to to help bring Louisiana around and if he can do that He's going to survive this thing fine Having followed state government the way you have can he provide not only the the clout and the leadership But also the muscle needed to get some of these programs through well see we don't know now that there's a big difference between the Edwards of now the Edwards running uh, running the state now in the Edwards of the first couple of terms. He's got a consolidated Louisiana Association of Business and Industry to, that he works sometimes with, but mostly against. I mean, he's got, there's some real, the, the power situation in the state is a little different now than it was his first two terms. But if he's got the leadership abilities that apparently a lot of people in the state two years ago thought he had and, and very well might, um, perhaps he can pull this out, pull, 
pull us out of some, some really tough times. So. He said this was a vindication, yet he was not exonerated. In your opinion, is there still a cloud hanging over his administration as a, re as a result of this hung jury? Yes, but um, it's probably not that different than the, than, than the cloud that you saw over uh, Governor Edwards in, in his earlier terms when there were always investigations, always investigations going on. I think it, it, it ended up where it didn't change many people's minds. I mean, people who really liked him just thought, you know, it was those one or two people against him and people, people who have hated him all along or disliked him all along felt like it, it, it was a smear job or whatever. Professor Parrott, we appreciate your thoughts. Thanks for being our guest this evening. Well, it seems for college professors, politicians, even people on the street, when it comes to Edwin Edwards, love him or hate him, everyone, it seems, has an opinion. No dispassionate interest here. Today, LPB correspondent Karen Ackman talked to Louisianians and asked them for their reaction to the mistrial and the man who was at center stage throughout this historic 14-week proceedings. Um, I thought it was going to be get a mistrial before they ever did the case. You know, I think they just wasted the taxpayers' money by having a trial. Well, I thought after had taken so much time in trying to find a verdict that they would come out with a verdict. And it really was almost a waste of the taxpayers' money to do all, to go through a long process of a trial and not come out with a verdict either way. I understand that it's going to go back to trial, and hopefully they'll come to a decision on it. I personally uh, think he was guilty. Like we said, it seems everyone in Louisiana has an opinion, even reporters. Laura Myers covered this trial for us for the past 14 weeks. And Laura, was it the blockbuster, the historic trial of the century everyone said it was going to be? Ken, a lot of attorneys are saying that the RICO law is very difficult to prosecute, that it's used largely to prosecute white collar crime and mafia crime. And I think we all have to remember that there were 73 witnesses, 75 witnesses. There were almost three months worth of testimony, and that's a lot of testimony for anyone to have to remember. There also was a great deal of publicity surrounding this trial, especially nationwide publicity. In your opinion, was it fair, or was Louisiana painted to be a state run by bumpkins? There were a lot of national reporters here from Los Angeles, Chicago, Dallas, Atlanta, and New York. And a lot of the stories I read seemed to focus a lot on the personalities of Edwin Edwards and the personality of John Voltz. Well, Laura, I wonder if they decide to retry this case, if it will be called Retrial of the Century or Trial of the Century Part Two. In any event, we'll be there just as we have been to cover all of the major stories of 1985. Next week in a special year-end review, we will take a look at what made this a year to remember. From hurricanes and tornadoes to a storm of a different kind, a storm of controversy at the state capitol over educational reform. Join us next week for a special report. That's our show for tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Ken Johnson. On behalf of everyone here at Louisiana Public Broadcasting, have a safe and joyous Christmas. Good night. Funding for the production of Louisiana, the state we're in, is provided in part by the Ziegler Foundation of Jennings and Gulf States Utilities, helping Louisiana bridge the gap to our energy future.